is Wednesday. <laughs> um, so, of course, last night was rough as fuck. Um, it is, uh, I'm trying not to get emotional right now about it. It is, uh, difficult, um, of course, right now with juggling, um, caring for you and not being able to care for Miles. Um, so I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. And uh, this morning, I went ahead and uh, called your job. Sorry. Went ahead and called your job this morning. I called David after that. He he answered. He called or called back. One of the, I think he called me back. And um, you know, explain to him that you know you're you're not coming back to work right now um, because you had a stroke. I told him I needed to, you know, talk to somebody in HR about you know what what needs to happen next. Um, I need to find out what your disability benefits might be, if any. I don't know if you had. I don't know what you signed up for. I don't know if you have short-term disability, long-term disability. I don't know. So <clears throat> he said he was gonna talk to the people upstairs for you. And then um, Josma called me back. Um, and so I talked to her and I explained to her, you know, what was going on. And she said that HR from Boca Raton um, would be in contact in order to, you know, tell me about what what benefits you may have available. Today, I'm going to be working on your benefits. So I need to um, hear back from HR. And then I, I'm also going to be doing some research today on Social Security disability. <coughs> Social Security disability benefits. To find out if you qualify for that. And I need to also get you set up for Arizona-based Medicaid. Because I don't, I don't want anything crazy popping back with your billing because your father had used a Maryland address and they started your Medicaid benefits on a Maryland address. Um, <clears throat> speaking of that, I, I got your registration fixed up. I don't know if I already said this. If I already said this, I'm sorry, but I got your registration fixed up with the hospital um, I went and talked to the registration nurse and everything, and she pulled the form for me um, and showed me, you know, all the information. She was like, go through this information and make sure everything is right. And everything was wrong. Everything was wrong. So your father had his address as your address. He had some 410 phone number that is not your phone number listed. I don't know if maybe the hospital pulled that up from a previous day. I don't know. I don't know who phone number that was. It wasn't yours and it wasn't his. So I don't know where they got that phone number from. Um, he had your religion listed as Catholic. Um, under the, there was a section to add points of contact. One of them was emergency contact one of them was next to Ken. He had himself, he had himself listed as your emergency contact. He had no one listed as next to Ken. So I talked to the nurse as I'm, I'm going through and I'm changing all the information, putting your correct address, my phone number, this, that, and the other. I didn't want to put your phone number because it's a Virgin Islands number and we stateside and I just didn't want to even play with that. So I put my phone number. So I asked her, I said, well, what's the difference between, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sitting in the parking lot, like, I'm making sure I'm not blocking nobody's traffic. Um, I said, so what's the difference between emergency contact and next of kin? And she said, well, it's not a whole lot of difference. Um, if anything were to happen to you, then they'll basically call both of those numbers. It's just like having, you know, two parents that you call, you know, on a school form or something like that. She was like, they'll call both of those numbers and um, whoever answers first is, you know, who will get the information or whatever about you. I said, oh no. I said, then that'll be me. 
she of course was like yeah this whole time you know we we were not understanding like what was going on with that and um and why you know why everything was set up the way that it was and I was like girl listen I said I find it really interesting that there's two areas here on this form emergency in contact and next to Ken and I was not listed as either she looked at me and she was like I think I need to take a call yeah because that was some bullshit you had the opportunity to list me you chose not to on purpose So, that's that. Um, I got it all fixed up. God is good. God is good. I got it all fixed up. I got your property back. Um, I turned in the documents yesterday to the physician to start your guardianship paperwork. Because I'm not about to play with him. I'm not about to play with him. So, I'm playing nice with him right now. And, you know, just keeping him occupied. But I didn't appreciate that at all. Not at all. And I'm probably not going to be forgiving when it comes to that. Because I feel like he tried to play in my face. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that type of behavior. It's so self-centered. Because I don't even... I'm not saying that he's even doing it maliciously. But he's so self-focused. He's so interiorly motivated. All he can see is his own desires and his own wishes. And he's not empathetic to how his behaviors affect anyone else at all. And that's why he's not fit to be overseeing this process. Because in this process, the person who's overseeing you needs to per be the person who has your best interest at heart and who knows you best and who knows what you would want. Not what they would want, what you would want. And that's me. I'm literally the only person who knows exactly what you want. Who would, who would know exactly what your wishes would be. And who would carry things out according to, you know, what's going to be in your best interest regardless of if it's, you know, if I like it or not. For example, um, next week on Monday... I got to go back. I got to I got to take care of Miles. That means I have to leave you in the care of your family. That's what's in your best interest is to have them care for you while I'm gone. I don't want to do that. But that's going to be what's in your best interest and I have to care for our son. And I know that you would want me to go and care for our son and not leave him there by by itself like that. So knowing that you would tell me, babe, go ahead and fly home. Like, my family got me. Like, I'll be fine. Knowing that you would say that, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move forward with um, the other family members who seem like they genuinely want to, you know, be of help, support, you know, all of that. You said that y'all got that. I, I need you to honor that. For sure. Because this is going to be hella pricey. Hella pricey. Going back and forth, going back and forth. Making flights on short notice. Those short notice flights are expensive as hell. Even on um, Spirit, it cost me $900 to get here. And I got to go back on short notice again. So, um, that's where we at right now. I'm trying to stay long enough, though, to get your guardianship squared away. I got to wait and see what your hearing date is going to be um, for your guardianship. And once I get that part squared away, hopefully the nurses and everything have filled out your paperwork. And then um, I can go over to the court today and get that started. Because I really, I really need to get this process crackily. And once I get your hearing date... Then I can figure out exactly how long I need to be here, whether or not I have time to fly back to Miles and then come back, or if it's going to be a quick hearing, you know, like next week or something, then maybe I can just stay until the hearing date, get your guardianship squared away. So at least I have all of the legal, you know, um, decision-making authority over you, over our finances, all of those things. And then I can leave you with your family, knowing that they can't do anything behind my back 
because it'll be against the law. So that's the word of the day. The word of the day is benefits. Benefits and rights. Rights and benefits. We doing legal stuff today. You know how I like to do one thing a day. I like to make sure that I get at least one, one important thing done every single day. So that's the only way that I'm staying organized with all of this. This is like a huge project management situation. Um, but I want you to know I'm handling it. I'm handling it and it's gonna be okay. And I'm okay. Day by day, I'm okay. So I love you, I'm on my way to see you right now. I'll talk to you later.